is it Wednesday? Feels like that. Dan Patrick Show. Got a busy final hour here at the New York City Man Cave. It's more of a loft than it is a man cave. By the way, guess who was staying at my hotel last night? I, everybody gets one guess here before we bring in uh, Mitch Williams from the Major League Baseball. I'll even let Mitch have a guess here. Woman. Close to the show. Now close to the show. Paulie. Jennifer Garner. Yes. Oh, no way. Bazinga. Yes. Got it. Did you say hello? I did not. I was going to walk up and say. Scared. Jen, I know. Yeah. I was. I was. I was going to go up and go, Jen, Danny. And then I thought it might be lost on her after our conversation yesterday when she was promoting the movie, uh, Draft Day. Were you worried about her saying, wow, the TV really, really does add 10 years? No. I mean, I was fine with that. <laughs> I mean, just because you lost weight. I said years, not pounds. I know, but you had to lose weight. I mean, you were we were worried about you. I was fat. Yeah, you were. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mitch Williams, the, uh, the wild thing. Do they still call you the wild thing? Yes, every, you, everywhere I go. Do people not know your real name? No, they know my real name. Okay. But it's always... A wild thing. Filed, or followed by wild thing. Yeah, it's one of those things that... You're DP. Yeah. I mean, there, I trust me, I was called a whole lot worse. <laughs> the worst it ever got for you was where? Uh, well, after game four of the World Series in 93. In Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, when I walked out to my, I was packing my truck to go back to Texas. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. And I literally, I had a pillow, a blanket, and my 9-millimeter pistol that I was licensed to carry that I was packing to take home. And a light came on at the end of my driveway, and I'm like, who are you? And it was a police officer. And I said, what are you doing here? He said, they didn't tell you? And I said, tell me what? He said, well, you've had a number of death threats. I said, no, they didn't tell me. I said, I've got my gun in my hand right now. I said, I guess I won't put it in my truck. I'll take it in the house. And he said, well, don't shoot me. And I said, don't come in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but this is after the, the Toronto Blue Jays series. Yeah. No, this is after game four, the 15 to 14. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Did you have death threats after the Joe Carter home run? No. I had, I got the freakiest thing. You, you've you been to the ranch yeah. that I had. Yeah. You were the only guy that ever came down there. The only reporter nice enough to make the trip. Was that the 3-2 ranch? Yeah. Yeah. It should have been the ball four <laughs> range. It actually had three two on the bottom of the pool. But uh, I would go up to the barn and there would be stuff stuck on my front gate. I got pictures in the mail of people with their picture taken in front of my front gate. So, I mean, there was some strange stuff. So they found, like, I had a hard enough time and I was invited to the ranch. <laughs> So they, they found the ranch, oh, yeah. and they were letting you know that they were outside, yep. or they knew where it was. Yep. How scary is that, though? Do you tell your wife at the time what's going on? Oh, yeah. My my wife might be scarier than me, Dan. <laughs> Have you met Irene? Yeah. She's not very big, though. <laughs> no, but trust me. Yeah? That's the only person on the planet I'm afraid of. But can you appreciate the love, the passion that fans have? that the game does mean that much to them. Oh, without question. And, and I knew all the people in Philadelphia, to a man, to a fan, they knew I gave everything I had every time I walked out there. The guys that made the, de uh, the death threats, to me, those are just guys that lost gambling. Yeah. Did you ever forgive Schilling the way he acted during the World Series when he put the towel, when you came in, he put the towel over his head? He couldn't watch. No, I've I've never forgiven him for it. Uh, you ever talked to him about it? Yeah, I offered to meet him in his driveway, <laughs> but he didn't want to meet me. So <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's something he did, and I'm sure he regrets. And uh, so, no, I've never really spoken with him about it. Because people always expected something when you went to the mound. Yeah, there was always drama attached when you went out there. Yeah. We had no idea what it was going to be. Well, and I was one of those people. <laughs>
But did you go out not knowing what you had that day? Like Rivera goes out, Trevor Hoffman, some John Frank. I mean, you can run down the Lee Smith. They sort of knew what they had when they went to the mound every time. Well, I knew what I had. <laughs> I just didn't know if I knew where it was going to go. The hardest I ever threw, I was just throwing a bullpen session in Chicago. And uh, the bullpen coach, we were getting killed. He said, uh, let Mitch throw the bottom of the eighth. He's throwing 100. I never had the ball come out of my hand that way. Through the bottom of the eighth, Baines, Walker, and Hewlett, <laughs> I struck out the side on 10 pitches, 10 fastballs, one fouled off. Never came out of my hand that way again. And you had no idea what you did? None. None whatsoever. But do you marvel? I, I, I look at Rivera, and we knew what was coming. And and he didn't care if you knew what was coming. No. But but how how does it work if I know what's coming and I still can't? It's not like a knuckleball. I, he's throwing this, you know, this cutter. You, number one, you don't know how much it's going to cut. When it, <laughs> and, and the great thing about Mariano, and the reason I hate the cutter for everybody else in this game. You wouldn't teach to the pitch? No. Because it's his natural delivery. Kenley Jansen, natural delivery. To throw a four-seamer, they have to think. And to throw a cutter, that's just how it comes out of their hand. And you look at all the arm injuries today, and that's pitchers trying to get here and at the very end cut it, not set it like a slider and finish it, but get it to here and then cut it. We're seeing so many pitchers getting hurt in today's game, that it's just stupefying to me. Well, it's it's amazing that we haven't progressed very far when it comes to pitching. Well, they, they want to baby everybody. You cannot run a marathon by training running 10-yard sprints. I threw every day for 16 years. I never got stiff or sore. But all of those great pitchers, whether it was – you know, Seaver and Gibson and Koufax and Marischal and Nolan Ryan, they they believed in throwing every single day. And that's how it should be. I mean, that's what you're paid to do. But I, I think it's a bigger problem. Like the Yankees with Java Chamberlain. Screwed him up. Let I want you to pitch through adversity. I don't want you to put you out there. You got in trouble now. I'm going to take you out. Uh, Steven Strasburg. I mean, I want you out there because I'm going to find out more about you when you don't have your best stuff. Absolutely. And and I I believe that I coach a 10-year-old team. I don't have a pitch count. I'm smart enough to know and look out to the mound and know when a kid is tired. If he's still throwing the ball mechanically right in the sixth inning, why would I take him out? It makes no sense. I'd like to watch you manage 10-year-olds. You would have liked it this weekend. Have you been thrown out? Not as a manager. No. I came really close this weekend. <laughs> but they fired the umpire. Wait. <laughs> Wait, during the game? No. Oh, okay. After, After. the game. Uh, you can watch Mitch Williams on uh, MLB Now, MLB Tonight, featuring uh, live look-ins with the games, complete local channel listings available at findmlbnetwork.com. If Yasiel Puig is your teammate, what do you do? As a veteran, what do you do? Well, and, and that's the thing. As a veteran... I would have to take the chance of maybe getting in a fight, but he has got to change. And what happened last year with Uribe in the dugout, where Uribe was trying to calm him down and Puig was pushing him. Trust me, if Dave Hollins had been on that team, oh boy, it would have gotten ugly. If Larry Parrish would have been on that team, guys that I when I came to the big leagues in '86, you didn't say nothing. Nothing. And I was ha I weighed 170 pounds, so I ain't saying nothing. Puig, his talent so far outweighs his baseball acumen. At some point, they've got to – that ga gap has to close. Well, he's maturing before our very eyes. At least, I think he's maturing before our very eyes. The off-the-field stuff, I understand – Young kids. Yeah. I mean, you you made money, did stupid things. Absolutely. You had teammates who made money and did stupid things. I, I'll give him that benefit of the doubt. It's how he plays baseball I have a problem with. 
doesn't hit the cutoff man. He's terrible on the bases. He has all of this talent. Well, you know, the poverty part of this, I get. You get money, and you're going to have fun with it. He's played baseball all of his life. He hasn't had money all of his life. He's right. had baseball all of his life. You have to understand how and be a professional when you're on the field. That's all. Yep. The other silly stuff, if we told stories about people we know, players you played with, what they did off the field, it would pale in comparison to Yaseel Puig. Yeah. So I'm being fair with that. I don't, you know, that that's somebody else's job. On the field, that's where I, he, he has to learn to play the game. Hit the cutoff, man. Don't be stupid on the bases. And that we talked about this last week. And I compared it to if you're in a police chase, you cannot outrun the radio. And <laughs> Yasiel cannot outrun the baseball. Yeah. He has to recognize when I can stretch it and when I can't. And as far as the cutoff man goes, there's a lot of guys with great arms. And like I said, I coach 10-year-olds. If you make a great play in the outfield and then airmail the throw, you've just made a bad play. So you've taken a great play and turned it into a bad play. Hit your cutoff, man. At least be able for him to cut the ball. Uh, 25 years ago yesterday, Major League, the movie came out. Oh, really? Yeah, did you know that? No. Yeah, 25 years ago. Congratulations, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie Sheen, wild thing. But you took it from Charlie, right? That's the yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was wild thing before me. Did you ever ask him how they came up with that nickname, or no? How he got it? You know how you got it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> as soon as he knocked the head off that aluminum guy, I knew I was getting it. <laughs> when they, uh, when my first big league camp, Alan Bannister, who was forty-two years old at the time. He was the first guy I had to face in live batting practice. Oh, no. First pitch, I hit him right in the ankle. <laughs> and uh, Buddy Bell was standing on deck, swinging his bat, getting loose. And he goes, I'll hit later. <laughs> so uh, Pete O'Brien yeah, yeah. O'Brien is coming in there, and Obi was left-handed. And I, Oh, no. I hated facing left-handed. Because you thought you were going to hit him? Oh, every time I missed, it was up and in. <laughs> and so I come set in my set position, and Larry Parrish yells, Obi, as soon as he starts home, jump on the plate. You'll never get hit there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always good to see you, man. Oh, buddy, I enjoy coming and, in. And, and you look great. You, you, oh, uh, thank you, you. you slimmed down. I thought you were Pete Inconvelia last time I saw you. No. <laughs> Inky, in I wasn't fat strong. I was fat, 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 fat. fat. Yeah. Yeah. When it gets easier to go over you than around you, yeah. it, it's time to lose weight. He's uh, Mitch Williams. You can uh, check out uh, Major League Baseball, MLB, uh, MLB Tonight, MLB Now. Love the coverage there. Find MLBnetwork.com. Mitch, wild thing, Williams. Uh, we'll have uh, Buck Showalter. He'll join. You don't have a feud with Buck Showalter. This show is officially going from dumb to intelligent. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Because Buck is a smart, smart baseball man. I love him. But you don't have a problem with him, right? I, oh, heck well, no. I always worry with you because, you know. I, I don't have a problem with anyone. Other that, than? that. Well, do I really have to say it? The first guy that managed me. Bobby Valentine? Yes. Yeah. I mean, because. To this day, if you saw Bobby Valentine. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I did a game for Fox, a Saturday game. Yeah. I have to interview him before the game Oh my in his God. office. And I'm going to be professional about it. But you hate him because he lied to you. Yeah, lied and just was a bad person. Okay. <laughs> Other than that. So I walk in. I, I walk into his office, and I said, stuck my hand out, and I said, how you doing, Bobby? And he says, do you really give a blank? And I went, <laughs> no, no, I really don't. But I have to ask. <laughs> How'd the interview go? Oh, it went fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for stopping in. My pleasure. Buddy. He's uh, Mitch Williams.